Hello everybody. I hope you had a good weekend and uh, didn't freeze on uh, Friday. Uh, it was awfully cold around here. It was you know way below zero that night and, and it was a pretty rough day to be around. But anyhow, so we're all warmed up now and that's kind of nice. So let's see. So announcements. You know, we had a Xylab that was due on, on what last Friday, I guess. A lot of people didn't get it in. So I think what I'll do this time is I will uh, make those available to you again so that you can, you know, I'll give you an extension on that one and uh, and you can get that in hopefully on time. I, I mean, you know, it's the first one. It's kind of a tricky interface. I understand all you know all good i'll just give you a break on that but you know we got to get through this material so you know that's really what we got to do uh remember your group project uh nothing new on this slide but just start thinking about it start digging around start figuring out what you're interested in and where you want to go with your career i mean this is a good t opportunity to build expertise in a data set that's really interesting to you and uh, and that's really my goal is to you know learn from this don't don't expect to have everything done don't expect to know everything before you start use it as a learning opportunity dig around be curious be you know dig into things and, and do some background research on the field that you're interested in if you're interested in the uh you know the iowa liquor sales data set you know fine that's a that's a cool one it's interesting but it's all about marketing so you know that's a marketing data set if you want to do marketing which is you know great from an analytics perspective that's what lots of you're going to end up doing think about what that means how would a marketing person use that kind of data if you're into healthcare, we've got all those COVID things in there, and that's all public health stuff. So how would a public health person use that information? What would the goal be? And then use that as the beginning of the narrative that you're going to build as your dashboard, because that's what dashboards are. They're stories told in data. And, uh, and But you need to know the background of the story before you can start telling it and so you know don't forget lots of places out there to learn and lots of things to do but you have to take it on yourself so this chapter chapter four that we're doing uh, this week is all Xylabs and uh, and you're gonna have to dig in and get used to these things and figure out how they work so but if you look at the Xylabs that we have coming up here we've got what three create table statements we've got one insert we've got one update we got one delete and we've got a select with logical operators and then an alter table for the movie table you know those are the standard functions those are the things that you need to do and uh and so you know getting getting through these is really key and a really good opportunity for you to make sure that you know how to work with these things and how to interact with the xylab interface because once again it's not entirely easy to work with that you know can be a little bit tricky now that last one the cbbics videos and extra content that's all about er diagrams and er diagrams are great ways to communicate information so if you work on a big project with a lot of people and that's the way big projects work just because you know something doesn't mean that everybody knows something so you need to find ways to communicate with and share what you have learned and one of the most effective ways to do that around databases are things like er diagrams and so getting good at working with the er diagrams is a key and we're going to have a, a case study later on where we'll see you know how how specific those ER diagrams need to be so um, you know I give you a, a link to uh, one, a free ER diagram software that's out there you know use whatever one you want if you want to but you know this one kind of works and so you know why not so 
that's what the extra uh, videos and stuff are all about because we really don't get into that the ER diagram construction very much in the Zy book. But you really need to know how it works as just a way to communicate to others and for you to maintain that information for yourself. So we're going to look at some of these guys, some of these uh, queries that you need to run. And, and, you know, I'm not afraid to give away an answer every once in a while. That, that's, that's fine. Uh, but I'm going to use a different interface for this. I'm going to use the, uh, the, uh, I'm going to use the MySQL Workbench. Yeah, let me just get this all lined up here. I'm trying that my Camtasia is now a 720p. I have a feeling I was just trying to go too much uh, before. So if you were to do these queries in uh, on a real uh, real server and not the, uh, the the Xilab interface, well, you'd have to do a couple of things before you did it. And you're welcome to use this code. I mean, there it is. Pause and you know type it in if you want. It's up to you. But anyhow, so this is you know, a bunch of the queries that you're doing for this week involve the horse table. And the horse table, you know, it just it's just a table. Um, but what I've done is I've put it into place here so that you can see where you know how you would actually do this on the MySQL Workbench. Well, the first thing you'd have to do is create the database. And in this case, you know, you've got to create database horse. Now, one thing to, to remember on all of these, these queries is look at that semicolon at the end. Semicolon, semicolon, semicolon. Don't forget, if you don't have it there, it's probably not going to run. So don't forget your semicolon. So first we create the database horse. And then we have to tell uh, MySQL which database we want to use. And in this case, we want to use the horse database. I could have created a database horse info if I want. I probably should have. And then use horse info. And then within horse info, we could have a horse table. Would have made the naming a little clearer. And I didn't think about that until just now. Uh, so, and then, then the next thing that we do, and this is one of the first labs, and this is the create table statement for horse. Well, let's let's uh, let me back up just a second, and that's let's look down at the bottom here. So, remember in MySQL Workbench, every time you run a, a query you get output. In this case, our action output is, you know, for our first line, create database horse, we get a, 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 a line that says uh, create database horse, one row affected. Well, where's the row that's affected by creating the database? Well, it's not in the horse database. It's in your system database. It's in here. So if you, it's Oh, it's in there someplace. Oh, it's uh, in the, uh, uh, it's one of these, I can't remember which one, but it's one of these, uh, the, the schemas that are over there on the side. And, and all that information is stored as tables also. So, you know, uh, MySQL uses a database to keep track of all the things about MySQL. And one of the things is, what databases do we have? If you wanted to see that, we could go down here and we could use a, a show command show databases and uh, and then we'll run this guy I, I usually select it and then run it and here's all the databases that I have here on this on this MySQL server and you can see that one of them is horse okay so when we ran the the uh, create database create database horse and it says one row affected it's this one here. It's in the database table where we added a line, which is the horse table. So when you see those things, just be ready for it. And then use horse. Okay, well, here's use horse. Zero rows affected. 
that's because we're just telling it a logical thing. We're just saying, use the horse stuff. And, uh, and there's no tables that are, that are updated by doing that. So, you know, no zero rows affected. Now, the reason to pay attention to that is that in the Xilab, it looks for things like what, what uh, uh, rows have been affected. How, what ta how, what's the state of, the, of a table before you run a query, and what's the state of a table after you run the query? And it compares those two, and it knows what it should be if you ran the query right. And that's how you get your credit. Well, in this case, where I create the database horse, one row affected, the Xilab can check for that. Where I use the horse table, the horse database, there's zero rows affected, so the Xilab can't really check for that very well. And that's a problem. Now, it's, you know, it, there's a way around it, but just, you know, just you keep your wits about you, and you can see what's going on. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to run our create table statement. And so here's our create table statement horse. Okay, and uh, and things it's you know syntax things to to uh, pay attention to. Uh, we've got the create table. That's the command, and then we're giving it the name of the table horse in this case, and then we're giving it the information about the table called horse. And when we want to do that, all of this information inside the parentheses is is a uh, is a modifier of the command out in front of it so when we think about how to organize this table and how to or how to organize this query and what's our syntax going to be remember things inside the parentheses all focus back on that previous statement so in this case we're telling it all of the fields that we have in here you know all good then we've got our, our closing parentheses and then our our uh, semicolon you'll also notice that at the end of each one of these lines we just have a comma because we're continuing on with that same command okay all good so the, the fields that we have in here is we've got an ID, and that would be kind of like a horse ID. That would be probably a better way to name that field. Uh, small int. What does small int mean? Well, small, you know, the tiny int, small int, int. Those are our three integer fields, mostly, that you'll use. And, and the reason you should know something about that is because it determines how many fields you can have in this table. If you used a tiny int uh, data type for the ID field, then that would mean that you could only have you would only have eight bits allocated for that ID field. In which case, two to the eighth remember it's all binary, gives you the number of entries that you could have in that field. And if you had a tiny int, that would only be 255 uh, entries in the table horse. Well, that's a lot of horses, but still, uh, you know, it's not a lot for other things we do. So, you know, anytime we've got this manufactured uh, primary key, we the the data type of that primary key determines how many fields we can have. Now this is a small int, and small int gives you 16 bits to work with. So in that case, you could have up to 65,000 horses in this table. Two to the eight, to the 16th is is 65,500 something or other. It doesn't matter. But um, so you just have to remember that that is, is out there. Now, the other uh, uh, limits that we have on this data is so we've got this unsigned. Now, unsigned, that means not negative. Another way to say not negative. Why would we do that? Because it's a primary key. We're never going to have a negative primary key on here. It's always going to be 
you know, a positive value. And then we have auto increment on this so that, so that later on you'll see we don't need to specify a value to go in here because MySQL knows that in auto increment you take the previous entry and add one. Now, that brings up an interesting case. Say you've got a table where that's your, you know, it's in production, your records are coming and going, they're being modified, they're being updated, you know, all that stuff just going on that, that happens. Well, if you have an auto increment ID field and, and, you know, after some time, some records get deleted from that table, what happens to the, the values of the auto increment? Does MySQL go back and fill in previous values that have been deleted? Or does it just add one and keep on adding one so that the number of records or the ID field continually gets bigger, 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 and never goes back and fills in those, those records that were deleted as part of the normal course of business? And in fact, what it does is it just keeps on getting bigger and bigger which is fine, but you have to remember that the, the ID field is not the same as a count of the number of records. And that's where this thing matters, because in a lot of cases, you're going to be tempted to say, well, the ID on this, this latest entry is, you know, 23,397, so that means we've got 23,397 records. Not true. And that can be an important thing to be right on. So anyhow, so there's our ID field. Now, this next one's tricky. So registered name, Vercare, that means if we've got a name, you know, that's, you know, a name that's only four characters, we only allocate four characters to that field and, uh, and not all 15. Like if we use the, the uh, care field, some people call it var, var char, char. I, I like care because it's character, you know, but yeah, whatever. But look at this part here, not null, all right? So that means we've always got to have a registered name in here. This is going to come back to bite us later on. And it's probably a mistake in the Xilab, but you need to just kind of deal with it. Uh, and uh, let's see. So, and these are our breeds. And, and then we've got a, uh, a check. Now, check means that the only values allowed in this field are the that come from this list. And, you know, if you're a horsey person, you'll recognize that, you know, that's a bunch of different breeds of horses, you know, whatever. Uh, and so that's going to come up later. Now, if you misspelled Holsteiner, S-T-I-E-N-E-R, of course, it wouldn't allow that field to go in there because it would be a misspelling. Uh, height, we've got decimal 31. That means we've got three places. And, you know, in the horse world, uh, you know, you measure things by hands high. Uh, a hand is four inches. So, you know, a uh, uh, height between 10 and 20, that's 20, 10 times, uh, times four and 20 times four. And that's measured at the shoulder of the horse. I used, I used to do this kind of stuff. My daughter was into it. So, uh, so anyhow, so that's what that's doing. And, and a 20 hand high horse is really, really, really tall. 10, that's a pony. 20 is really big. You would have a really rough time getting onto a 20, 20 hand tall horse. And then birth date, uh, uh, you, this is, uh, uh, it's got to be greater than or equal to 2015-0101. There's weird things around race horses and birth dates. I'm not going to get into it. But anyhow, so this, you could come up with a birth date of a horse that was born before uh, January 1st, 2001. Then our primary key is our ID field, which makes sense. All good. You know, no big deal. But we can run this command, this query now, and uh, and we've got our create table horse ID and uh, error record horse. Oh, 
table horse already exists that's because i ran it before and we can see in here uh, create table horse id and uh and that one worked no problem but i just ran it again because well you know and then we've got our insert into okay so here's the problem this last one okay does this a couple of things so insert into horse registered name breed height birthday okay uh, registered name breed height birthday okay fine no id because we don't have to because it's auto increment uh, so and that one you know we we just don't include that in our insert into command and uh and but all of these fields now if we wanted to we could delete this part here and we could say insert into horse values and it, it would work no problem as long as we use the same order as up here so it's gonna look you know tables have order because we you know first column second column third column fourth column that exists and, and a column has a value it's either the first column the second column the third column the fourth column it's not a you know a, a, anyhow so so that's a, where this thing would go so even if we didn't have this part listed in here babe would go into the registered name field quarter horse would go into the breed field 15.3 would go into the height field and 2015.02.10 would go into the birth date so we don't have to have those fields in there but we can now it would be a fun experiment to put these in a different order than they are in the field in the columns in the table just to see what happens the stakes are very low with MySQL because nothing blows up. It all happens on your machine. It's all, it's all good. But the thing that happens here is this null. So we've got our insert into command and it says error code 1048 column registered name cannot be null. So this one, we've got a null value in here. This horse, this Egyptian Arab, uh, it, it does not have a name or at least that we know of and so it's not going to let us run this thing and and when we do our insert into uh nothing's in there because well let's check let's let's check to see if anything got in there select star from horse oops select star from horse and uh whoops i didn't run it i had to select it and then run see because we had that error in there that means that nothing happens my sequel looked at that and said there's an error i can't do anything with this and stopped other an, another approach might have been to include all of the to insert all the values that do fit and just not include the one that doesn't but that's not what my sequel does when there's any error nothing happens so it just stays at nothing now if we wanted to we could we could uh change this around and and call this horse larry there's any Larry's out there I apologize I use Larry a lot just it's kind of a, a not a joke name but just a name and so now we'll run our query and uh, and everything worked and uh, and we're all set now let's look at our select star from horse and you can see that we're all in there it caught that null value on on the uh on the registered name field and said no can do but so here's how you can do things you can use mysql workbench and and you know try stuff out create databases all that stuff it all works just on your machine hopefully you got this part to run if you didn't uh we've got a ta now and she'll be available to you to help you out i think she's gonna do some some uh, uh, uh tutorial hours pretty soon we'll get that all squared away but anyhow take care everybody i hope you have a good week and uh and let's get those labs in okay bye bye